Hi guys, um, so I am back, this is like my first video in quite some time, this is actually like my third attempt now at filming this video because I've either run out of memory, so I've had to clear memory, then once I've started filming again because I've made space, um, my battery goes flat. So this is like my third attempt now filming this damn video. So, I'm just going to get stuck straight into it. Um, so today's video is actually going to be a book haul. I have 21 books here that I have bought over the past a little over a month, I would say. So anyway. I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with the book I'm currently reading, which is uh, Blood Magic by Tessa Gratton, which just looks like this. And I am only up to, where are we, chapter 17 in this book. Now, I am not 100% certain of what happens in this book, obviously, because I haven't, you know, finished reading it yet. But from what I've read so far, the book is about this girl and this boy who live in um like a small you know little country town and the girl has lived there all her life with her mom and her dad and her brother and her parents are murdered um and everyone in the town believes that her father shot her mother and then shot himself um but um drusilla or Scylla for short, does not want to believe that. She doesn't want to believe that her dad went, you know, crazy and killed her mother. Um, so anyway, that's, um, you know, about Scylla. And then the boy, he um, moves to the town with his dad and his stepmom into his grandfather's house because his grandfather had just died. And the um, boy's name is Nick. And Nick and Scylla live, well, not next to each other, they're, like, in between their um, house is this, like, the old cemetery in the town, so you've got, like, Nick's house, the cemetery, and then Scylla's house. And he sort of stumbles across Scylla in the cemetery one night, and she is performing blood magic in the cemetery, and... He sees her um, reanimate a dead leaf and bring it back to life. Now, at first he sort of like doesn't know if what he saw was real or whether he was imagining it or what happened. And he was kind of, I guess, I wouldn't say scared, but like a little bit apprehensive about it because his mother used to do blood magic and his mother went crazy. And she disappeared um, because her, um, his mum and his dad got a divorce due to her going crazy. And the father had got full custody of um, him and he never saw his mum again. And so he was a little bit apprehensive about what she was doing. Um, didn't know for certain if that's what she was doing, but, you know. Um, and then he sort of, over the several chapters that I have read, he kind of falls for Scylla and he does sort of, I wouldn't say confront her, but asks her about the magic that he did see her doing, and yeah, so that's kind of really as far as I've got in this book so far, but I am actually really, really enjoying this book, um, I'm really loving it, and I believe this is a standalone book, but I could be wrong, like I'm not sure because I actually looked this book up on um, Wikipedia and it says it's from the Blood Journals but if you look at the other book that says it's in with the Blood Journals, um, each book has different characters so they're not the same people so it could be like a group of books within the same storyline, I'm not really sure but yeah, so I got that book. That book I got from um, QBD and I only paid $7.99 for this book, so really, really cheap. Um, the next two books I got, today's Wednesday, um, I got these on Monday before work. 
and I got these from Demix. The first book I got because um, I've been dying to get this series and I haven't got it yet is the Morganville Vampires series and I saw this book which is volume 2 and that is book 3 and 4 put together in one book so it is book um, 3 which is Midnight Alley and book 4 which is Feast of Fools put together in the one book. I do not have any of the other books in the series but... I got volume 2 because it was only $5. Now, I have s heard so many good things about the um, Morganville Vampire series and also um, about Rachel Kane as an author. So I'm really, really intrigued by this book. Um, anything vampires, I love. And I've never been disappointed by a vampire book at all, ever. Not once. Um, I kind of don't really know exactly what this is about, but what I'm assuming it is about, judging by the very small amount of information that is on this back, um, on the back of the book, is that it's about, excuse me, um, it's about, um, a small town called Morganville in Texas, and in the small town, humans or people and vampires live in the same town with a, a, a like a coexistence type of thing and judging by this book um, it says that like you know a really old vampire comes into town and he has like this really like evil plan um, for the town and I'm assuming that he wants to I guess kill all of the people or something like that anyway so it's a really poor description of this book I know but I'm really not sure exactly what it's about but I know that um, this book has been raved about there's been so many good reviews that I've read about this book so I really can't read um, can't wait to read it myself and for five bucks like you know you can't really go wrong with that the next book I got from Demix on Monday was the Heiresses by Alison Rushby, which is this beautiful, beautiful book here. I'm really loving the cover of this book. And I picked this up. It was sitting on like a stand in the doorway, like as you walk into the bookstore. And I picked it up and I I like I what drew me to it was obviously the cover, but then I read the back of it and what it says about is three seventeen year old girls back in London in nineteen twenty six and they find out that they are actually triplets and they were obviously separated um at birth or something like that. And they find out that you know they are triplets and they're Aunt Hestia, which they never even knew existed, contacted them saying that their mother had died and that they were entitled to their mother's fortune um, because they were the rightful heiresses to her mother's fortune and they need to find a way to get their fortune off of their greedy half-brother and it's like a really really intriguing story so it says it's like um you know, got love, betrayal, money, intrigue, and everything like that in this. So I'm really um, looking forward to reading this book. I love, 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 love books set back in, like, the 1920s and even, like, earlier than that. I really love these types of books. Um, this one was only $14.95 from Demix. And another reason why I also wanted to get this book was because Alison Rushby, the author, is actually from Brisbane here in Australia, and that is where I am from. And I don't think she's currently in Brisbane at the moment. I think she might be in England at the moment. But, yeah, she, she comes from Brisbane, which was kind of really cool because authors never come from Brisbane, or that many anyway. Um, and the other cool thing about this book is it is autographed. So it just says, happy reading, love Alison, right there. And I'm so excited for this. Like, I'm just so happy. So this is actually my very first autograph book. I've never had an autograph book before, so I'm really, really loving this book. So anyway, moving on.
I went to Target and I picked up three books. They come in this box set here. It is um, three books from the Confessions of a Shopaholic book series by Sophie Kinsella. Or Kins yeah, Kinsella. And I know there's six books in the series. I only have four of the series um, books in the series. I still need to get book one and book two. But I actually have not read any of these books, even though um, Confessions of a Shopaholic is like my all-time favorite movie. So anyway, um, yeah. So there's three, three, three books in this box set, and they are, I believe, that's book three. Then book five and book six I think it goes like that so I could be wrong but yeah so anyway this one here is um, Shopaholic Ties The Knot and I really love the cover of all of these um, books in the Confessions of a Shopaholic series I'm in just total love with this so for those of you who haven't read this like me and if you haven't read it like me then clearly we're living under a rock um, this is about Becky Bloomwood um, and she, in this book, gets married to Luke, her boyfriend, and they, you know, move into their own Manhattan apartment together and everything like that, and the two families, kind of, um, like her family and then his family, um, like the two mums want them to have a specific type of wedding, like, um, Becky's family wants her to have the wedding in Oxshot and where, and her mum wants her to wear her old dress and then Luke's mum wants them to have like a big extravagant wedding at New York Plaza and you know that type of thing so and it she kind of feels like you know a little bit stressed out at having to deal with you know the wedding and everything like that but yeah so that's basically what I got from reviews on this book the next one was um, Shopaholic and Baby in the box set. So again, about Becky Bloomwood and her husband Luke. Obviously they're married now. And they move to London. And she is now working in a fashion store. And she finds out that she is pregnant. And obviously they're overjoyed and excited. You know, they're going to have a baby together. But there's a little twist to the story because being the celebrity that they are, um, she, you know, they want to have the best things like the best nursery, um, you know, the best like pram, you know, obstetrician and all of that. And so they get the best celebrity obstetrician, which turns out to be her husband's ex-girlfriend. So that's that one. And again, love the cover. And then the last one in the series is Mini Shopaholic, and this is my most favourite cover out of all six books. I love this cover. And this one is when Becky has already had her baby. She had a baby girl called Mini, and Mini is now two years old, I believe, in this book. And she is a little mini shopaholic like her mum. And they're currently going through like a bit of a financial crisis um, with the London bank closing down. And she has to cut back on her expenses and her extravagant life and be more thrifty. And yeah, so that's that one. And believe it or not, this three book box set only cost me $4.98. Like seriously, four ninety eight for three books. You really can't go wrong. But yeah, then moving on, I went and ordered some books off of this website here. It's called All Books for Less. Um, I love, love, love this website. They used to be, um, they have stores um, in Australia, not everywhere, but they do have some. There used to be um, a store in my shopping centre, but that is no longer there. So now I just order off the website. So I ordered seven books from the website, and I'm going to get started. So I ordered the, I believe this is the 
Hang on, let's have a look. It's the fourth book in the Shopaholic series, which is Shopaholic and Sister by Sophie Kinsella. And this one is about Becky Bloomwood um, having, I guess, a little bit of a crisis and realizing that being married is not what she thought it would be. And she's feeling like, you know, a little bit down in that. And she finds out she has a sister that she never knew about. And so she's all excited to be meeting, you know, the sister that she never knew she had. And she's excited because she's finally going to have, like, you know, a shopping partner and everything like that. And it turns out that her sister hates shopping. So that's that one. Um, this book I only paid $5 for. And it was $19.95. So that's, like, $15 off this book. That's an amazing, like, bargain for that. So that's that one. The next book I got, um, I got because I love the cover of this book here. Also, um, I've seen these books in um, the bookstores and I've been meaning to get myself some of these books but like you can see how thin it is. It's like a really, really tiny book. And seriously, I refuse to pay almost $20 for, you know, a paperback that's really, really tiny. Um, because it's just ridiculous price. So I'm not paying that for that, um, you know, a book this small in a bookstore. So anyway, I've never bought this book or any of the other books in the same genre or, you know, whatever. But anyway, so this one is called Derek's Bane and... It is a Wyndham Werewolf Tale by Mary Janice Davidson. And another one of the reasons why I bought it was because it's like, it's a cute little book. It's going to be like one of those really super quick, fun, easy reads. And sometimes I want to read a book, but I just feel like I don't have the time or like the concentration really gets stuck into a really big book. So this is going to be perfect for that. Um, so anyway, this one here is obviously about werewolves, and it says, I've never read it, uh, where are we, it says, okay, it's got Derek's a werewolf with alpha issues and a body to die for. Sarah is the personification of unspeakable evil and smells like roses. Now, if they could just stop lusting after each other long enough to save the world, it's always good to have a psychic around, except when she tells you the world will soon end unless you do something about it. For Werewolf Derek Gardner, that means heading to sunny California and destroying the reincarnation of possibly the most powerful sorceress in history, Morgan Le Fay. But the beautiful and slightly ditzy Dr. Sarah Gunn has no idea that she is Morgan Le Fay. Her masses of Wild red curls and crystal blue eyes make killing her an unpleasant prospect for Derek and his half-hearted attempts don't meet with much success. So if he can't kill Sarah, he'll join her on a cross-country odyssey to change her fate, confront a medieval evil and hopefully get lucky. So it's such a cute little book. Like it's literally, it's 200 pages long, but they're only very small pages. Like there's not that, like you know. And I only paid $2.50 for this. Like, amazing bargain. Like, even if I don't like it, what am I wasting? I spend more than that on magazines. And crap, basically. So, the next book I got from All Books for Less is Bad Girls by Rebecca Chance. And I love book covers with shoes on them. I just love them. I actually have quite a few books by different different authors that have the same sort of concept on their cover. But yeah. So this one, I haven't read this book either. Actually, I haven't read any of these books yet. They're all two on my to-read list. So this one says, Some stars are born to go supernova, but when they crash to Earth, the fallout is explosive. Stunning supermodel Amber Peters should have the world at her feet, but her secret addiction has led her down a dangerous path and given her a deadly enemy. Lap dancer Sky Elwood is desperate to escape her tour dry life but has no idea how until the client makes her a proposition she can't refuse. 
Following an ultimatum from his fiance, gorgeous A-list movie star Joe Jeffries is finally heading to rehab to sort out his sex addiction and save his squeaky clean image. Spoiled daughter of a legendary rock god, Petal Gold, is convinced she's a huge star in waiting and she'll trample on anyone she thinks is standing in her way. Passion, jealousy, betrayal, revenge, and scandal. During their tumultuous 30 days in LA at the Casa Bell Rehab Clinic, the lives of Amber Sky, Joe, and Petal will be transformed forever. But for one of them, the stakes could not be higher, nor the situation more dangerous. So... That just seems like a really, really interesting book for me. I love these books. Um, I don't think I've ever read anything by Rebecca Chance, though, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. And this one was only $5, so, yeah. Now, the next book I got from All Books for Less is by the same author and Rebecca Chance, and it is called Divas, and no, it is not part of a series. It's just got similar covers. Um, so, yeah, this is Divas, and this one, um, it's kind of got a similar story set up as the other one, um, and when I say set up, I mean similar in the way that it's written because in this one here bad girls um there is several different people that this story is being told from you know each view and then they sort of all combine together because they have a common denominator or whatever you want to call it and this is kind of very similar so this one says never get between a girl and her diamonds stunning good looks a gorgeous fiance a limitless trust fund london's leading it girl lola fitzsimmons leads a charmed life as a pampered princess whose rich father funds her every whim. Evie Lopez is just, a beautiful, just as beautiful, but she's had to work her own way up life's greasy pole, literally. Now, she, now she's hooked herself an indulgent sugar daddy, Evie has abandoned her pole dancing career, swapping New York City strip bars for a luxury Manhattan penthouse. But Lola and Evie are on a collision course. When Lola's father falls into a coma, her scheming stepmother, Corinne, seizes control of the purse strings and cuts off her stepdaughter without a penny. Then Corinne evicts Evie, her husband's mistress, from her fabulous love nest. Overnight, it's riches to rags, and although they have every reason to hate each other, Lola and Evie must join forces if they are to defeat their common enemy, Corinne, the Ice Queen. As the girls team up, they discover they have more in common than they realise, and they are, they're they amazed to find out exactly what they're capable of. So again, this sounds like a really, really good book. I can't wait to read all these books. And again, this one was only $5. Can't really go wrong with that. So yeah. Moving on to the next book. This one is called A Cautionary Tale, Hedge Fund Wise by Tatiana Boncompagni. I'm, I completely just butchered her last name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It's just that one there. And this is what it looks like. And again, it's like, you know, a sparkly, sparkly, you know, cover. Now, this one is about... Um, a married couple that her husband gets like you know a job offer um, in managing head funds um, in New York and it's a job offer that you know he can't turn down so they move to New York and the lady I think her name Marcy um, you know tries to fit in with the other hedge wives and she decides to not get a job because she wants to focus on having a family and then she comes to realize that the other hedge fund wives don't work and they you know just go out and party and shop and live fabulous lives and her husband ends up cheating on her and leaves her so she decides that that she's going to stand on her own two feet and make something of her life you know better of her life than yeah that so that's basically what this is about um I've never read anything by this author, so I um, am looking forward to this. Now, this book was $12.99. I only paid $2.50 for this book, so 
it's a bargain. Like, you cannot argue with that. Then the next book from the same place is called After Moonrise, and it is by PC Cast and Gina Showalter. It just looks like this, and this book includes stories possessed and haunted. So it's basically two story, like two stories from two different authors in one book. So um, I have read stuff by PC Cast, but not by Gina Showalter. So, I'm looking forward to this. Now, PC Cast wrote Possessed, and it just says, Being a psychic detective who can channel only negative emotions makes Kent Rafe good at catching murderers, but bad at maintaining relationships. Then Lauren Wilcox arrives with a most intriguing case. Her twin sister has been murdered and is communing with Lauren's spirit and sharing her body. Rafe's the only one who can track the killer and free the spirit, but soon he begins to wonder just which twin he wants to save and why. So that sounds like a really, really good book. Um, I can't say from the books that I have read by PC Cast, I've never been disappointed, so I am really looking forward to reading that one. And then Haunted by Gina Showalter says... Artist Aurora Harper is convinced she's witnessed a crime, a murder so brutal she's repressed the memories only to paint the scene by the light of the moon. Now she needs her new neighbour, Detective Levi Reed, to help her track down the victim and the killer. Levi is dealing with his own memory issues, but one thing he knows for sure, Harper is meant to be his, and nothing can take her away from him, not in this life, nor in death. So that sounds like a pretty intriguing story as well. And I have read that um, G Gina Showalta and PC Cast are very similar, like write very similar books. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. And this one was only $5 as well. And then the last book I got from All Books for Less, and this is the one I'm looking forward to reading the absolute most, and I'm so excited about this one. Um, it is Alice in Zombieland by Gina Showalter. <laughs> um, this cover is just absolutely stunning. It is so amazing. Like, I am just totally in love with this. Now, this is part of a series. I don't know how many books are going to be in this series because... Um, this is the first book, and then I believe the second book is coming out sometime soon. I don't think it has been published yet because I tried looking up about the second book, and it just said that it was coming out in 2013. It didn't say when, so I thought, well, maybe I might check some of the bookstores just in case it has already come out, but none of them had them, so I'm thinking it's coming out soon. Ish, I hope because this I believe was um, published last year so yeah so basically what it is is it is a retelling of our, um, Alice in Wonderland but just with zombies so um, it just says here that if anyone had told Alice Bell that her entire life would change course between one heartbeat and the next she would have laughed from blissful to tragic innocent to ruin please but that's all it took one heartbeat, a blink, a breath, a second, and everything she knew and loved was gone. Her father was right, the monsters are real. To avenge her family, Ali must learn to fight the undead. To survive, she must learn to trust the baddest of the bad boys, Cole Holland. But Cole has secrets of his own, and if Ali isn't careful, those secrets might just prove to be more dangerous than the zombies. So this is book one of the White Rabbit Chronicles. So that's that one and this is the book that I'm just absolutely the most excited about reading I love this and I have heard so many good reviews about this book so I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a book I'm going to love and it's really I don't think it's going to be disappointing at all so I'm excited for that and I only paid five dollars for that one so that is pretty good now, moving on to the next bookshop I went to. Um, I went to a bookshop called QBD here in Australia, and ugh, I got like a ton of books from there. And these books I actually bought 
over a month ago and they've just been sitting in a pile here forever and a day because I haven't had any time to read anything um, with my partner getting sick and ending up in hospital and having surgery so I haven't read them yet read them yet so anyway um, the first book I've got here in my pile is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies Dreadfully, Dreadfully Ever After. Now, this is the third book in the trilogy. There is three, uh, two others. The first one is Pride and Prejudice, oh my god, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and the second is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies Dawn of Dreadfuls. So I don't have the first or the second, but... I saw this sitting on the clearance table, or wasn't really a clearance table, it was just like a sale table, um, and it was only $5.95, so I was like, you know, can't go wrong, pick it up. And I know people are going to be like, hating me for this statement, but I do not, do not like, sorry guys, my camera just stopped recording for some reason, but yeah, I just don't like it. So, basically this is the remake of Pride and Prejudice. And it is about Elizabeth um, Bennett and where are I? And Darcy Fitzwilliam, I think his name is, Mr. Darcy, anyway. And you know they get married and everything and all that sort of stuff, but they can't enjoy their honeymoon because he gets bitten, and Elizabeth is trying to find a cure to turn him basically back into a person because she had her, has heard that there is a cure. Um, I haven't read this book so I can't really comment on about it but it's you know it's a zombie book. It seems pretty cool and yeah so it was like you know $5.95 or $5.99 sorry so that's that one. Um, the second book I've got is Champagne Babes by Amanda Bronca and it just looks like this and I love the covers of these and there is an, I do have another book in the series I think it's a trilogy um, I'm not 100% sure but I do have another book I believe it's the first one though that I don't have so I think this is like the second and then the other one's the third I could be wrong though I really have no idea but this one, um, it just says that, where are we? It's got Eva Valentine is back and trouble is still her middle name. After surviving a near-death experience, Eva marries the man who nursed her back to health. Living it up in style on their honeymoon, she is shocked to discover she is already three months pregnant. When little Daisy is born, life is far from perfect and soon Eva is struggling with marriage to a man she hardly knows. Thankfully, her best friends drag her away for weekends of fun and excitement and with all the temptation on offer, she no longer feels like a desperate housewife, but it's anyone's guess whose bed she'll end up in. So I love these trashy stories, I really do, and it seems like a really good one, so I'm really looking forward to reading that one. Um, again, I still have to get one more book in the series, so I tend to not read series until I have the whole collection. I'm really weird like that. I can't read like book one and not have all the rest unless it hasn't been published yet. I will buy everything first and then read. So that's that one. Um, it was $19.95. I only paid $4.99 for that one. So that's that. The next book is Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters. It is another remake of the original. Again, I did not like the original. I just don't. Not interested. But this one is basically um, obviously a Jane Austen remake and this one says by Jane Austen and Ben H. Winters. So Ben H. Winters is the writer that rewrote the Jane Austen version. Now it is about... where are we? Do, 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 do. I can't find it. Okay, so it says Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters expands the original text of the beloved Jane Austen novel with all new scenes of giant lobsters, rampaging octopi, two-headed sea serpents, and other biological monstrosities. 
As our story opens, the Dashwood sisters are evicted from their childhood home and sent to live on a mysterious island full of savage creatures and dark secrets. While sensible Eleanor falls in love with Edward Ferraris, her romantic sister Marianne is courted by both the handsome Willoughby and the hideous man-monster Colonial Brandon. Can the Dashwood sisters triumph over meddlesome matriarchs and unscru unscrupulous rogues to find true love, or will they fall prey to the tentacles that are forever snapping at their heels? This masterful portrait of Regency England blends Jane Austen's biting social commentary with ultraviolet, ultra-violent depictions of sea monsters biting. It's survival of the fittest and only the swiftest swimmers will find true love. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, um, this is a standalone book, so it's not like the other one I just showed you before. I'm pretty sure this is just it. Um, again, I love monster books. Like, I love vampires, zombies, witches, werewolves, you name it. I love it. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, this one was $17.95 and I only paid $5.99 for it. The next one is called The Christmas Wedding by James Patterson and Richard um, Delat. De hang on. I don't know. Del Delilo? Delilo? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. But it's this book here, and I really like the, the cover. It's kind of sweet. And I'm a sucker for a good Christmas story. Obviously, I know it's not Christmas, um, Christmas. it's like the 1st of May here, but this book I bought because, it, like, the synopsis sounded really interesting, and I am going to be reading this at Christmas time. I'm saving it for Christmas, basically. But it just says here, the tree is decorated, the cookies are baked, and the presents are wrapped, but the biggest celebration this Christmas is Gabby Summerhill's wedding. Since her husband died three years ago, Gabby's four children have drifted apart, each consumed by the turbulence of their own lives. They haven't celebrated Christmas together since their father's death, but when Gabby announces that she's getting married and that the groom will remain a secret until the wedding day, she may finally be able to bring them home for the holidays. But the wedding isn't the only surprise. There is one more unexpected gift and it could change all their lives forever. Again... I'm a sucker for romance stories and I only paid um, $6.99 for this book so still it's really not that dear if it's not great but I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this one. The next one is The Nanny Diaries book. Um, this is the second one in the series so this is Nanny Returns by Nicola Krauss and Emma McLaughlin. Um, I have not read the first book yet and I don't own the first book but I picked this up because it was super cheap. So I'm going to buy obviously the first book so I can read this because I actually really really like the movie so yeah I'm not really going to go into um, too much about it. Basically um, it just says you know Nan and her husband, um, you know, uh, basically, you know, settling in, um, and in their permanent home and everything like that, and she's, you know, getting her consulting business off the ground, and then her husband surprises her with the fact that he wants children, and she's not so open to the idea, and then, um, Greya, which is the little boy from the first book, gets back in contact with her because he came across the tape that she filmed on the last night that she was in the Grey, um, in Grey's household and he wants some answers so she feels like she has to go help Grey and Grey's, um, seven-year-old brother. So basically that's basically what it's about. But yeah, so I'm not really going to go too much into that. This was only $7.99, again, super cheap. The next book is The Empress of Ice Cream by Anthony Capella and I am in love with this cover. Like it is adorable. Love, love, love this. And I have never ever read anything by Anthony Capella or even read 
like or even heard of this book but I saw it at QBD and I just loved the cover and I fell in love with the story on the back because again this is one of those stories that's set way back in time and it's set in France and I'm a sucker for any any story set in France or England and yeah so this one is about let's see it's got France 1670 Carlo DeMarco Demirico? Yeah. Carlo Demirico's mastery of the extraordinary new art of creating ice creams. Extraordinary, oh my god, extraordinary, sorry guys. Extraordinary new art of creating ice creams has brought him wealth, women, and a position at the court of, I think it's the 15th. I have no idea how to read Roman numerals. I've never been good at that, but I think it's Louis the 15th. I probably just butchered that and you're probably like there's no need for the Louis the 15th or something I can't even remember but whatever and it says then Carlo was sent to London along with Louis de Carol Car Car an impoverished lady-in-waiting the most powerful ministers of two countries have decided that Louise is to be Charles II's new mistress and will stop at nothing to make sure she submits but Carlo too is fascinated by the um by that an enigmatic and enigmatic yeah French woman with the king's every pleasure the subject of the plots and betrayals and Carlo's only weapons his exquisite ice cream soon he must decide where his loyalty his loyalties lie so this seems like a good one it's set back in the 1600s it's in France it's got love betrayal kings and all that sort of stuff and I love these types of books so can't wait for that one and this one i only paid 7.99 for and it's such a beautiful cover so yeah i'm really looking forward to that one and then the next book is from the chronicles of kaiden series i have no idea how many books are in this series but i picked it up because it was super cheap and it kind of interested me so this is book one, and it is called Born of Empire by Simon Brown, which just looks like this. And I, I've heard of the Chronicles of Kaiden, but I've never really been that interested in them. Like, you know when you hear a book and you're like, meh, whatever, and you, but you just don't, you don't even know what the book's about. It was kind of like that for me. But then I picked this up and I actually read the synopsis on the back of it and I kind of was really intrigued. So it says here, the mighty Himalayan Empire has never been stronger. The Empress Lorena of the formidable Kevlarin dynasty is sending an expedition led by her cousin Madden across the deepening sea to expand its borders and counter moves by its nearest neighbour and greatest enemy, the Kingdom of Reveld. But problems emerge to complicate Lorena's reign. Her unstable sister Yanara has been thwarted in love and this makes her dangerous. Like all Kevlarin, she is able to harness the might of the Safed, a field of seemingly limitless power beyond the grasp of ordinary people. The object of Yunara's obsession, the, the banished Madden, has defied Kevlarin law and is having a child with a commoner. Lorena fears what destruction Yunara's anger may unleash. The news of an uprising against the ruling Kevlarin family in Revelle breaches Himalay. When the cat catastrophic truth behind the revolution is revealed, Lorena finds herself facing the greatest challenge to her power. The conflict between empire and kingdom is ignited and both the old and the new worlds will be threatened by fire of magic and war. So I love these types of books. Love, love, love them. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so I'm going to have to get all the other books in the series. And this one here says it was twenty um twenty five dollars, but the reason why I picked it up was because it was three ninety nine. You cannot go wrong for that price. So that's that one. And then the very last book I've got is the other book from the um, Champagne Secrets. Um, yeah, Champagne Secrets series, and it's again, it's called Champagne Secrets by um, Amanda Brunker, and I think this is the third book in the series, or the trilogy, 
yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the third book. So, again, I don't really know what this one's about. Um, but it was intriguing. Like, like, you know, the series um, seems intriguing by what I have read from reviews. And I really was drawn to the cover as well. I'm not really going to say too much about this one because I have no idea about this one. But I... I wanted to read it so and I'm gonna read it once I get the other book and I have the whole trilogy so yeah um, and the cool thing about this one is it was $35 and I only paid $7.99 for this book like that is such a huge 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 reduce but yeah so that was the last book in my book haul and I Definitely am going to be buying um, a lot more books, but I kind of really need to read the ones I've got because I've got such an ever-growing pile of books I need to read. But if you have read any of these books that I've shown today in this book haul, um, you know, please let me know in the comment feed down below what you guys think. I'm always, always looking for people's, you know, um, ideas and things, or like, you know, their reviews on books and. If you have a book um, recommendation that you think I might like based on, you know, what you've seen here or whatever, let me know because I'm always interested um, in, you know, in these books. And if you want me to read a particular book out of this book haul, like, first, let me know and um, I will bump that up to the top of my to read list. And... I also have like a Goodreads account so if you want to you can jump on there and check out what books I have read and what I'm going to read and that sort of thing. So I'll link my Goodreads account in the down bar below for you guys. So yeah, so this was kind of like a really long video so I'm sorry for that but I hope you did enjoy my 21 book haul and I will see you guys later. Bye!